Hello and welcome to the first episode of a hopefully long-lasting series of uh, video tutorials covering practical use of JavaScript. I was urged to do these uh, tutorials because uh, I think a lot of the tutorials you find on the web is using a lot of time covering how to print the sum of two variables out in an alert box and not really covering web designers' uh, everyday needs when it comes to JavaScript. So my goal is to show you some very useful examples on how you can enhance your web development by using common JavaScript functions. The first script we will make is a script uh, which will reveal or hide content based on uh, the user's interaction with a couple of buttons. And this is definitely a useful uh, feature when you're developing a website that you can allow the user to read more on a certain subject or have some special information displayed. I'm working in Adobe Dreamweaver, but of course you can use uh, any text editor you like. I've just opened a blank document and I'm just quickly going to add a title to it here. Uh, JavaScript buttons. Then I'll go down in the body text to create the buttons we need. And uh, I'm going to use uh, inputs. So I'll need to put them inside a form element. Now you don't have to use... Uh, buttons but that's kind of the logical approach here yeah. so i'm going to write input type button then i'll give it some attributes uh, and on click and a value uh, the value will be uh, sort of a label on the button so i will uh, label the button touch me oh yeah in the onClick attribute, we will write the JavaScript that is going to be fired off when the button is clicked. And first I'll just uh, write it as inline JavaScript, but later on I'll separate the JavaScript from the HTML and then just uh, call a function here from onClick. But let me first actually uh, create the div that we want to manipulate with the JavaScript code. So I'm just going to uh, add that uh, down below. Um, going to write a div tag and give it an ID. I'll, I'll call it the div. Uh, and I'm not going to write anything in the div. And I'll just close off the div tags. Now this uh, empty div element that we just created, uh, we need to somehow make this uh, responsive to the onclick uh, code up in the button. Uh, so um, we're going to have to sort of instantiate this as a JavaScript object. And we do that by um, uh, writing document.getElementById. Uh, and then we're uh, going to uh, target the element, which is what's called uh, the div. And, um, and now we can give it JavaScript properties. So I'm just going to write uh, inner HTML, which is uh, a JavaScript property that will enable us to create content uh, in the div. And the content we want is just a string. So I'm just going to write equal to, and uh, then I'm going to write a string inside single quotes. I just write, you touch the button. Actually, I don't know if uh, I need to add a semicolon in the end of the code uh, when I'm typing inline JavaScript, but I'll do it just for, to be on the safe side. It's probably not going to make any difference. Okay, now I can save the HTML file and open it in a browser, and we can see the code is working. When I um, push the button, the content is displayed uh, in the div. Of course, I can't really close it right now unless I refresh the page. So we'll need to add another button to remove the content. So we can just copy the code from the button we already created and then uh, paste it in below. Uh, we'll just replace the text string with nothing at all. Then we'll give the button another value. Uh, we can just call it close. 
I'll save it again and this time I'm gonna open it up in another browser just for variation and of course you should always uh, check your work in uh, at least three or four of the major browsers now we see the script is working correctly but it could be uh, kind of interesting to see what would happen to the uh, surrounding elements on the page so I'm just gonna add a paragraph below the div and on top of the page I'm gonna add a heading Okay, and we can see when I reveal the div, the content is pushing the paragraph down. And this is because uh, the div uh, by default has a relative position. It is generally considered as a good practice to um, separate your design, your content and your scripting. So now we want to get rid of the inline JavaScript. So I'm just going to cut out the code here and uh, replace it with a function call and I'll just call the function reveal uh, then uh, for the moment I'm just gonna paste our code up here and I'm gonna do the same thing uh, in the line below I'll just cut out the JavaScript and instead do a function call I'll just name this function hide you can of course name it whatever you like and again I'll just paste the code from the second line uh, up here and now we've managed to separate the JavaScript from the content but to make this work we'll need to uh, nest the JavaScript inside the script tags in the opening tag I write script type text JavaScript and I'm just gonna close the script check down here of course we also need to define our functions and we do that by writing function and a couple of brackets where you can pass uh, arguments but we're gonna leave those brackets empty then as always we'll add the square brackets in which the code uh, that we already have written uh, is nested and in the first function here I forgot to write the function name so I'll just do that and we decided on uh, calling that function reveal and we'll do the exact same thing with the other line of code only difference is this uh, function will be called hide all our JavaScript code here doesn't actually have to be within the body tags Actually, it's much better to have it uh, in the head section of the document. So I'll just cut it out and move it up somewhere between the head tags. Now the code I've shown you here uh, might be pretty basic, but with this type of functionality, we actually managed to take a static HTML element and turn it into an uh, dynamic object because now we can add all sort of uh, JavaScript properties to it and I'm sure you can see the potential in this uh, sort of functionality you could actually use this to uh, do pretty advanced stuff like fetching external content via Ajax calls and stuff like that by pushing the button and I'm just gonna show you this uh, quick other example as you can see, uh, when we click the buttons, we're now changing CSS class on the element. It's almost the same code as before, but we'll just need to uh, add a little bit of CSS to the document so we actually can see CSS classes changing on the click. So um, I'll just quickly set up some uh, rules. I'll create a class called blue text and I'll give it a uh, color attribute and I'll give that a value of blue I'm also gonna set up a class called red text and uh, give that a color with the value uh, red then I'll just put some static text down here in our div because we don't want the JavaScript to generate text now we won't 
the JavaScript to change class name. So we need the div to have some content of its own. And I'll just type in here some text, give it a color. And now I'll just go up to our JavaScript. Uh, and the only thing I have to do is uh, change the JavaScript property from inner HTML to uh, class name. And then I'll just uh, write in the class name that I want to apply to the element. And uh, I'll do the same thing uh, on the function for the other button. And on that one, I'm just going to select the red text class. And I have a little typo in the CSS that I'm just going to fix now. OK, and uh, now I just have to save it. And then we can see the script is uh, working like it's supposed to. The only thing that is a bit awkward is maybe the text on the buttons. But that's easy to fix. We just change the value attribute on the buttons to something more meaningful. And you might also want to change your function names to something more uh, meaningful. And again, this could be uh, extremely useful. For instance, if you're a designer and you're building an interface where you want the user to hover over one element and then have a completely different element change, uh, say, background color or something like that, you would just have to change the on click attribute to on mouse over. Anyway, that was all for now. Thanks for watching and feel free to visit my website if you have any questions. There's a contact form you can fill out.